I got a request in the comments section under one of my videos. Somebody wanted information on a substance called ergothionine. Ergothionine is a uh, natural substance. It's an antioxidant. It was discovered in 1909 in, in ergot, uh, er, a type of fungus called ergot, E-R-G-O-T. Now, ergot fungus has an interesting uh, place in history because for two reasons. First of all, LSD, the psychedelic drug LSD, lysergic acid diethamide, was derived from ergot. Uh, and the uh, some of you are familiar with uh, history, might recall the Salem witch trials in which innocent women were hung and burned at the stake. Uh, supposedly is because they acted, had, they exhibited strange behavior. Well, a couple of scientists have traced that to that fact that these unfortunate women c consume moldy bread that was contaminated with ergot fu fungus. So what they were actually experiencing were LSD trips. And, uh, you know, these early settlers didn't know what to make of it. So they accused these women of being witches. And they very sadly, they were just, you know, killed. They were burned at the stake or hung. But relating to uh, ergothionine, ergothionine, again, gets its name because it was originally discovered in this uh, ergot fungus type of stuff. And the fact that it's in a f discovered a fungus also suggests that the best source, the best natural source of ergot is actually mushrooms. With the, the number one mushroom source for ergothionine is called oyster mushroom, but it's found in most other mushrooms. Uh, and, for example, uh, the um, lion's mane mushroom, which is often touted for its mental acuity effects, it stimulates nerve growth factor in the brain. It supposedly helps get rid of brain fog. Uh, this is a, also a pretty good source of ergothionine, which, which, which translates into the fact that if you're taking any type of mushroom supplement or if you eat mushrooms, uh, for example, at least three times a week, two to three times a week, you don't need to take separate ergothionine supplements. <clears throat> they do sell ergothionine as a standalone dietary supplement, uh, the dose range, the suggested dose range, if you want to take it as a standalone supplement, is between 5 and 30 milligrams a, a day. Uh, besides mushrooms, other foods that contain ergothionine to a much lesser extent than mushrooms include liver, kidney, black beans, kidney bean, and oat bran. Now, they do contain ergothionine, but in much less quantities than mushrooms. Mushrooms are by far the highest source. Again, the, uh, the mushrooms with the highest natural content of ergothionine are oyster mushrooms and the mushroom called bolette, B-O-L-E-T-E, -E, which frankly I've never heard of. <laughs> I've never heard of. Uh, the, uh, now, the, when you uh, ingest ergothionine, it's also found in the human body and red blood cells and the lens of the eye, semen, and skin. Now, what does it do in these uh, tissues? Well, it functions as a pretty potent antioxidant. Uh, antioxidant, your body is constantly uh, uh, producing byproducts of oxygen metabolism. It's part of life. There's different names. Some of them, some of them uh, sometimes they're called reactive oxygen species or ROS. Uh, a more common name is free radicals. These are unpaired electrons that pair with regular paired electrons. I don't want to get into too much technical chemistry, but suffice to say that free radicals have a reputation of causing cellular damage, especially to fatty membranes, cell membranes. Uh, they're associated with a number of diseases, uh, and uh, the, the body has its own antioxidant system uh, composed of various en enzymes, including superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione. Uh, interesting fact about glutathione, it's one of the main liver detoxifying substances. Glutathione is what actually breaks down uh, or it helps detoxify oral anabolic steroids. Uh, and if you use too much, uh, if you take too many oral anabolic steroids, you could actually deplete glu uh, the glutathione in the liver, which can actually uh, cause some of the liver swelling or hepatitis that results from high dose use of oral anabolic steroids. Uh, now, the uh, glutathione, just as tangentially, it's not part of this video, but in case you want to increase your glutathione, 
are really good ways to take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine. Also, they have cysteine residues found naturally in whey protein that also increase glutathione. Glutathione itself is only it composed of three amino acids. That's all it is. It's a very potent antioxidant. Now, glutathione interacts with ergothionine because ergothionine helps regenerate when ergo uh, when glutathione helps uh, uh, let's say neutralizes free radicals it's degraded it breaks down but ergothionine can a can actually help regenerate glutathione so you could say that ergothionine works together with glutathione as a, 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 together they they give you a very potent antioxidant combo ergothionine itself is a derivative of the uh, amino acid histidine in other words it's made from the amino acid histidine it's what they call a thiol compound. In other words, it has sulfur in it, and uh, that's just the way that's the way it's structured. Uh, it's basically uh, it, it starts with the, uh, the production of uh, of, erg uh, of uh, ergothionine begins with the methylation of histine to produce something called histine betaine or hyoscyanine. Uh, can I? I don't want to slip into getting all the uh, you know all the chemistry behind it. So let's just talk about why somebody might be interested in, in either, either consuming foods like mushrooms that contain ergothionine or in taking straight ergothionine supplements, either one. In other words, you don't have to take both. If, you, if you're eating mushrooms, either food mushrooms, ergothionine is stable. So if you cook the mushrooms, you're not going to degrade the ergothionine that's contained in mushrooms. So if you're eating any kind of mushroom, with the best one being oyster mushrooms, you're going to get more than more than enough ergothionine. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, some ongoing research related to ergothionine. As I said, the pre, the most prevalent research is in relation to its uh, function as an antioxidant. It helps combat oxidative stress. Um, ox, uh, free radicals, these uh, byproducts of oxygen metabolism, they can damage cells, proteins, and DNA. Because of that, they're involved in the aging process. The, the, uh, uh, they can cause DNA mutations that can either speed aging or actually promote cancer. Uh, ergothionine can neutralize uh, these free radicals, and uh, in that sense, they offer good antioxidant protection. And of course, uh, because of the fact, uh, effect on DNA, they also uh, help uh, decrease um, the appearance of, of rapid aging. They'll, they uh, they make your skin look better. They reduce the effects of aging on the skin, such as lines and wrinkles. They help to maintain the skin's elasticity, and and uh, and, and also prevent the uh, rapid breakdown of collagen. The two main skin structural proteins are elastin and collagen. When the, when these uh, especially collagen, when it breaks down due to exposure, let's say UV rays from the sun, uh, when that protein in the skin breaks down, you get lines and wrinkles, signs of aging. Uh, so the um, er, uh, ergothionine also modulates what they call pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are, these are, uh, these are immune system proteins that are involved in the inflammatory process in the body. Uh, the inflammatory cytokines gain some pr relative prominence during the COVID-19 pandemic because a lot of the most serious side effects such as lung failure, where you had to be put on a respirator, they were caused by a massive release of inflammatory cytokines. So the uh, ergothionine, <coughs> excuse me, helps to uh, helps to lower the release of pro-inflammatory pro cytokines. Uh, it also seems to have an effect on brain health. Uh, ergothionine seems to encourage a development of new neurons, synapses. Uh, there was a clinical trial involving 92 healthy adults between the ages of 40 and 75. <clears throat> uh, they, they were provided with ergothionine supplements, and they found that it, uh, the, these, these, uh, these uh, adults showed increased cognition or thinking ability and much better sleep. So uh, p patients with dementia, uh, such as Alzheimer's disease, they, they usually show low levels of ergothionine. Uh, people with mild cognitive impairment, also known as senior moments, also tend to show low levels of, uh, of uh, ergothionine. Uh, ergothionine has a role in cardiovascular health. <coughs> of course, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of human beings, with cancer being second. 
There was a study from Sweden that involved 2,300, two, I'm sorry, 3,236 participants. They found that ergothionine was, asso- ergothionine was associated with a lower risk of coronary disease, cardiovascular mortality, and overall mortality. This probably relates to the antioxidant activity expressed by ergothionine because uh, if you have enough antioxidants circulating in the body, it extends the life of nitric oxide. A nitric oxide is a substance produced from the amino acid arginine. Our, uh, nitric oxide maintains the health and the elasticity of the arteries, and it helps prevent the accumulation of plaque in the arteries called atherosclerosis. That's a number one risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So in this sense, by acting as an antioxidant and helping to protect nitric oxide, the uh, uh, ergothionine ha- offers cardiovascular uh, benefits. Uh, it said there's some, uh, some research showing that ergothionine could be useful in cancer prevention. Uh, it, it seems to induce a, a type of cell death called necro- to- ne- necroptosis and, col- and col- uh, this is a study it induced the uh, the death of cancer, colorectal cancer cells. So it, it helps to prevent the development of, of uh, colon cancer. Uh, it seems to enhance the effectiveness of cancer immunotherapy by decreasing the immunosuppressive function of tumor, tumor-associated macrophages, which are, again, immune cells. So uh, that, in that sense, it, it can be uh, useful for, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Ergothionine also provides anti-inflammatory uh, properties. Uh, it, it modulates a substance called tumor necrosis factor A, or TNFA. That's a factor in, uh, in, the, in the critical immune, uh, uh, inflammatory response of the body. Interesting fact about TNF-alpha is uh, scientists think that the uh, increase of TNF-alpha with age plays a huge role in causing sarcopenia or the muscle loss with age. They base this on animal studies where they gave substances that block uh, the excess release of TNF-alpha to my older mice and the, the loss of lean mass in the mice was completely halted by stopping the uh, effect of t- uh, TNF-alpha on muscles. Uh, TNF-alpha, uh, again, is a very potent inflammatory substance uh, so um, when cells are exposed to stress and TNFA-alpha, the urgent uh, ergothionine reduced the activation of NF-kappa-B, which is the master controller of, N- of inflammation in the body. In other words, this s- protein called NF-kappa-B, nuclear factor kappa-B actually, is what controls all the other you know, immune uh, responses in the body. If you can control NF-kappa-B, you can control inflammation. Uh, systemic inflammation plays a massive role in the aging process. It's the underlying factor in a lot of degenerative diseases, including heart disease, cancer, and brain disease. So uh, as far as safety goes, it's uh, very safe. Uh, ergo- ergothionine, uh, one, good th- one interesting uh, fact about ergothionine is that unlike other, su- uh, other antioxidants such as vitamin E, vitamin E doesn't last very long in the body. Uh, vitamin E breaks down in about a day or two and it's gone. Vitamin C uh, is gone after a couple of hours. It, uh, it lasts 12 hours in the blood and then it's gone. This is the generally, this is the case for most dietary antioxidants. However, ergothionine is an exception to this rule because for some reason it lasts far longer. It lasts for days in the body. It's not, it's not rapidly broken down. It's much more stable than other antioxidants. So I think that's probably enough for you to know about ergothionine. It's interesting stuff. There's ongoing research, just as, as, as is the case with many other nutritional substances. Uh, the research on ergothionine is relatively in its infancy. I'm sure there'll be new research coming out. But if you, are, uh, if you want to get ergothionine, it's particularly good. I just want to say it's particularly good for those over 40 because it, it stops or delays or inhibits a lot of the processes associated with aging, including muscle loss and systemic inflammation. So if, uh, if you're interested in ergothionine, make sure to, uh, to include mushrooms with oyster mushrooms being the number one source, but they're found in all mushrooms. If you're taking lion's mane, you're, all, you're also getting ergothionine. 
I take I take two grams of uh, of uh, lion's mane powder myself. I take two grams a day. That's my source of ergothionine. And like I say, I mentioned the other foods earlier in this video that also contain ergothionine, uh, but they're found in much much lesser amounts compared to mushrooms. Mushrooms are by far the number one source of ergothionine. And if you want to get the best benefits uh, from mushrooms themselves, uh, at, you know, rather than a supplement, uh, then try and include mushrooms in your meals at least two to three times a week. The more often, the better. In other words, if you're getting, if you're eating mushrooms three times a week, you're getting a really nice dose of ergothionine. Now, if you decide to supplement ergothionine, let's say you don't want to eat mushrooms, uh, you know, uh, you know, and you want to take a straight ergothionine supplement. The, the dose range is 5 to 30 milligrams a day. Uh, the usual dose is only, the usual dose you need is only about 5 to 10 milligrams, but you can take up to 30 milligrams with no problems whatsoever. So I think that's about it for ergothionine. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti aging research, uh, ergogenic aids, hormone therapy such as testosterone uh, replacement therapy, uh, women's health and fitness effective fat loss techniques, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't. All of this is covered in my Applied Metabolics publication. It's 30 to 45 pages every month, devoid of ads, no ads whatsoever. I'm not trying to sell you anything in there. In fact, when I talk about supplements in Applied Metabolics, I don't even mention brand names for a specific reason because I'm just trying to give you solid evidence-based information that includes, by the way, my 60 years of constant study and experience, which as far as I know, isn't matched by anybody else who has a digital publication. I've been a professional writer for half a century. I have probably 15,000 published articles over the years. I've worked for all the major bodybuilding magazines. I was a science editor of Muscle and Fitness for over 10 years. I know how to write for the public. Uh, applied Metabolics is very easily understood and you'll benefit from every issue. I don't care what your level of education is. You, you'll definitely get some benefit from reading every issue of Applied Metabolics. It, it, could, it literally could save your life. There's so much great information in there. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, it, uh, the, also the information that's contained in Applied Metabolics, it's not, it's what I call off-the-road information, uh, information, meaning that it's not the stuff you're going to see in most of these YouTube videos or on blogs. It's stuff that's kind of that's not frequently discussed and sometimes never discussed. This is exclusive for my Applied Metabolics. Uh, so subscribe today. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. And when you subscribe, send me an email and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition exercise science and general health and medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only could send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that they're curious about pertaining to nutrition, exercise, and general health. And I will answer the question in appreciation of this subscription. You could look at that as kind of a bonus for subscribing. I don't know if there's anybody, as far as I know, there's nobody else who has a digital newsletter who personally answers questions from the uh, from the subscribers. I think I'm the only person that does that, but that's exclusive to subscribers. I don't I don't answer unsolicited questions because I only have limited amount of time, and I want to devote that to the people that are supporting my work. So what else can I say? Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. And uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your shelter, adopt a dog. Take care.